So in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about make to order and especially businesses that are working with custom make to order products. So as you would know, if you're selling any items that are customized, for example, things like what we already covered, custom coffees, or if you're selling things like jerseys or custom made furniture, whatever it might be, then you need to have an interactive way to sell that information, collect that information from your customers for the options that you would use in that product, and then push it to your manufacturing as simply and as easily as possible. So Katana supports one really key beneficial feature from Shopify in Katana app called line item properties. So there are a ton of apps out there in the Shopify ecosystem one of the ones that are most notable is something called Bold, and I'm going to use it as today's example, but there's a wide variety of others as well. But what Bold is, is basically a product options tool that allows you to add customizability for the products that your customers add to their cart. And when they select a specific option, it gets added to the line item on a sales order, and then there's a little piece of information underneath it, which is all of the details. So in the case of bold product options, they have a really useful website where they show how this works. Whereas currently, if you are selecting something from a Shopify default website, it would just only provide the variant and variant option that you've specified, which are all predefined. But as anyone knows, if when it comes to customization, you could have hundreds of thousands of possible outcomes but you can only program like a hundred of those for Shopify. So you use tools like this to justify and basically provide that need for your customers and for your business when those clients buy from you. So in this case, you can see here, um, you can find a t-shirt, you can select the size of t-shirt that you would choose, put some personalization, add some custom information, custom logo, upload a file, all kinds of stuff that can be used with your website when you're doing custom manufacturing. So very, very common. Now, how does that translate from the perspective of Katana and Shopify? Well, if you're using something like this on your store, then we need to see how that information pulls over. So I made a very simple uh, website and there's also another video on YouTube, which you can check out, which cover this, covers this in more detail. But this is something what I called Chris's custom rings. So basically, you go to the website, you select some custom options like the ring size, the type of rock that's inside of it, the material that's used, and then those orders pull over. So for the sake of simplicity, I've already created those orders, and I'm going to bring those orders into our existing demo account, which I'm using for this video. So to do so, um, let's go ahead and connect a second store. I haven't covered that topic yet anyway, so let's go ahead and do that too on top of it. Um, go into your settings page, integrations connect Shopify, select the store name, authorize it. This will bring you through the prompts, install app. It's that simple. If you want to install more than one Shopify store, you can easily do it by just adding them one after the other. I'll keep all of this stuff nice and simple. And confirm. Okay. So now what we're doing is we're importing our products, customers, and sales orders. Now here off to the right, what you see is the shop floor app. Now I've covered this already in the advanced feature uh, videos, but one of the most important things is, is that if somebody selects custom information on your Shopify store for a custom make to order pro product, you want to make sure that all of the people that are building that product can actually see those details. So let's go into it to our sales side. Now, one of the things that's different between an order that we get from a website that doesn't have customization versus one that does, I just want to show you real fast. So like, for example, if we look at this one, this is an order from Chris, you see that these are the line items in a sales order. Very simple. Description, description, that's a variant from Shopify, that's a variant on Katana. Easy, 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 no big deal. But the feature in Shopify that this integration supports is something called line item properties. Custom line item properties are basically another term that you would find metadata that is inside of the sales order line item. So one of these, this is two line items in a sales order. 
it will actually be within that as custom information. Now, for these orders that we have from Shopify, what you can see is if we take a look at Chris's custom rings sales orders and we open up one of the sales orders that has custom information, you'll see that this is the standard information that's found here, which is related to the product. And then using something like bold product options, where you can select those items before you put them into the cart, when the order is processed on the back end, you'll see this is a reference of the item. And then this is the selection from the customer. This is a reference from the item. This is a selection from the customer. This is a reference to the item. And then this is a selection from the customer. That information needs to get to your manufacturing floor people so they can see what it is they're working with for their custom manufacturing workflow. So when we go deeper into this and take a closer look on our sales list, let's go ahead and open up one of those orders that we just imported. This is what it looks like. So this order is a custom solitaire ring. And for that specific sales order, they selected these options. Size 10, tiger eye with some custom engraving that says good friends. Now I haven't already uploaded a recipe or a bill of materials for this particular product, but what happens when it gets pushed into the manufacturing queue? We generate a make to order. It pushes it to the manufacturing queue. And then when we take a look at that order, you're going to see this is your ingredients list and operations. Now, whatever the customer has selected from your website, which are these custom options, those are going to reflect what type of ingredients and what types of processes the client, uh, your manufacturing team has to work on it. So prior to pushing this to your manufacturing floor, it would be important to define uh, what materials are used to make that particular ring. Maybe if it's a big ring, it uses more gold. If it's a small ring, it uses less gold. Um, you also need to specify what uh, gold type. Now, normally what most customers do is they predefine like the basics of the custom make to order. So if the customer selects sterling silver ring, they'll automatically pre-populate ingredients with sterling silver. Or um, if the customer selects some other type of uh, thing with respect to the type of rock used, they would pre-populate the ingredients with that as well. But if the customer, let's say, chooses engraving on the ring or doesn't choose engraving on the ring, this affects the operations you would add. So you would either not have the engraving process or you will have the engraving process based on the customer selection. So really, whenever you're working with this type of stuff, that's whenever you get through this process of um, how does it appear to the shop floor team. So I'm going to add a couple operations just to keep it nice and simple. Um, I'm not even going to do anything special in here. I'll just add engraving. And then I will select a random resource, just disregard what it is, but then I'm going to choose operator. And then this is where things get really cool. So once you've got everything figured out, then that operator has been specified to work on that manufacturing order. And when they're on their phone or when they're using a tablet on the shop floor, they can access to this manufacturing order over here and they can click it open. And what's most important about this order when they click it open is that they can see under the notes section, what is the ring size, what is the stone, and what is the custom engraving associated with it? So everything that your customer puts on your Shopify store goes all the way to the individual worker who's going to be making that for your client through that make to order workflow. So a couple of really cool use cases. Uh, if you're a custom make to order manufacturer, uh, using this with your Shopify store really solves those gaps. And um, I hope that you found this uh, video useful. And um, of course, if you always have questions or suggestions, please reach out to our support team. Okay, cheers.